The Atlanta Falcons have the most interesting offense in the NFL heading into the 2023 season. They're led by a premier play caller with a bold and creative offensive scheme. They have elite personnel at certain positions, but also some major question marks that give this offense a wide range of outcomes. So today we're going to break down the Falcons scheme, weapons, offensive line, and quarterback, how they all fit together, and what needs to happen for them to reach their potential. Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Arthur Smith runs a Shanahan style offense, which was derived from Mike Shanahan's scheme in Denver. And every iteration of this around the league is slightly different, but in general, the key pillars of this scheme are outside zone runs and play action that attacks the middle of the field. And everything is designed to look the same before the snap, so plays build on top of one another throughout the game. They might run two or three jet sweeps one game, but they'll have 15 plays with that exact same jet motion, so you never know when it's coming, and there aren't as many visual keys for the defense to rely on. After Kyle Shanahan's success as Atlanta's OC in 2016, and then McVay bringing a similar scheme to LA, this offense has exploded in popularity, but no one has leaned into the core tenants and committed to the bit like Arthur Smith did last year. In 2022, the Falcons ran outside zone 261 times, which is the most of any team since 2015, and they averaged almost 5.3 yards per attempt. So this bread and butter play that's mainly supposed to set up everything else was actually a really efficient play on its own. And 44% of Atlanta's pass attempts last year were off of play action, which again is the highest rate since 2015. The next highest was 37. So we haven't seen many play callers orchestrate such a focused offensive scheme, and Smith was able to do it successfully because of Atlanta's personnel. The Falcons have an elite zone blocking O-line, and that starts with right guard Chris Lindstrom, who I think was the best guard in the NFL last year. He had a PFF grade of 95, which is tied for the second highest ever for an offensive lineman. He's incredibly explosive off the line of scrimmage. He can reach difficult landmarks at the second level in the blink of an eye, and he's so under control in open space to secure and finish blocks. The consistent footwork and hand placement make dominant reach blocks look routine, and he's always in the right spot. He's able to diagnose run blitzes and adjust his path quickly. But it's not just finesse with Chris Lindstrom. You'll see him move Vita Vea seven yards off the line of scrimmage on a down block. He can redirect his power and drive reach blocks into the ground. He really is one of the most complete run blockers that I've ever seen. And it's rare for a right guard to be this valuable to an offense, but Lindstrom is crucial to Atlanta's success. But then they also have Caleb McGarry at right tackle, who's a great run blocker in his own right and the best way to break off big plays with outside zone is having two adjacent wins on the offensive line when you can get a clean reach block right next to a dominant block at the second level there isn't a whole lot the defense can do to recover McGarry and Lindstrom are great run blockers on their own but putting them together has a compounding effect and those combo blocks create some massive running lanes so the Falcons had a top three rushing offense last year and they added a generational running back prospect in Bijan Robinson and a talented guard in the second round with Matthew Burge run so they've doubled down on their strengths and it's not unreasonable to expect them to have the best running game in the NFL but no matter how efficient you are running the football you still need to be able to create explosive plays through the air and Atlanta has the weapons to punish defenses for selling out to stop the run Drake London showed that he can be a team's number one option still not much of a deep threat but as an intermediate route runner I'm a big fan of what he brings to the table and then Kyle Pitts, I think, has become extremely underrated. Last year was 100% a disappointment, but I think the fantasy football discourse has affected how people view Kyle Pitts' play on the field. The raw production wasn't there, but a lot of that wasn't his fault. Out of 114 qualifying receivers and tight ends, Kyle Pitts had the lowest percentage of on-target throws at 53%, and only 57% of his targets were charted as catchable, which was also the lowest in the NFL. There were so many big plays left on the field where Kyle Pitts was wide open, but Mariota overthrew him. And I think with just average quarterback play, we'd be talking a lot differently about Kyle Pitts' 2022 season. He got injured in week 11, but when he was on the field, he still looked like one of the best route running tight ends we've ever seen. So the Falcons have two great receiving options that should allow them to create explosive plays off of their elite running game. There isn't a lot of depth, but fully healthy, it's hard to do much better than their top two. But whether or not all these pieces can come together and lead Atlanta to a playoff run, that's gonna come down to the quarterback, Desmond Ritter. He made four starts at the end of his rookie season, so it's a very small sample size, but I think he improved in each game. I was really impressed with his composure under pressure. He showed good awareness of the pass rush. He was creative manipulating the pocket and getting the ball out accurately from difficult platforms and he also made a lot of plays outside the pocket some really difficult tight window throws on the run and he was actually the only quarterback last year that had a higher pff grade under pressure than from a clean pocket 
Again, it's only four games. I don't expect that to continue, but it's great to see his confidence under pressure and outside his structure. He did make a few bad decisions in his first start, didn't turn the ball over, but there were a couple throws that should have been interceptions and the accuracy was inconsistent and ball placement was one of his biggest issues coming out of college, despite how clean his mechanics are. So that's the main thing that he needs to improve. If Desmond Ritter can give the Falcons consistent quarterback play, this will be one of the best offenses in the NFL. He's not going to be asked to drop back 40 times a game and carry the team. He just needs to make good decisions and deliver the ball accurately, and I do think he's capable of doing that. But as a third round pick with only four career starts, he's still the biggest question mark on this offense. And as good as I expect this running game to be, I don't think that alone is going to be able to take you that far in the playoffs. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.